Supreme Court rules in favor of FBI in case of spying on Muslims. From 2006 to 2007, in the wake of the September 11 attacks, the FBI's Los Angeles division hired an informant who claimed to want to convert to Islam with a hidden intention of infiltrating several mosques in Orange County, California. In 2019, the Ninth Circuit of uh, Circuit Court of Appeals ruled in favor of three Muslim plaintiffs who accused the FBI of targeting members of violence on the basis of their religion. Uh, Yasser Fazaga, Ali Udin Malik, and Yasser Abdel Rahim claimed that the FBI's spine had violated their constitutional rights as protected under the First and Fourth Amendments. Recently, on March 4th, the Supreme Court overturned a ruling from an appellate court in favor of siding with the FBI. The Supreme Court unanimously ruled that the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or FISA for short, had lesser precedent over the state's se state secrets privilege. State secrets privilege allows the federal government to block the release of any information in a lawsuit if, it re if, if, if its release can lead to a breach of national security. The American Civil Liberties Union, or ACLU, who represented the plaintiffs, denounced the Supreme Court's ruling, calling it, quote, a dangerous sign for religious freedom and government accountability. The ACLU plans to submit an appeal for further litigation. Wait, so this, the Supreme Court is not ruling in favor of spying on Muslims. The Supreme Court rules is ruling in favor of not releasing these state secrets, right? <laughs> right? So they are using. <laughs> <What was that>? <laughs> <laughs> we should just clip that part out. <laughs> like, <laughs> went through a roller coaster. Somebody clip there. that out. <laughs> okay. Okay, go on. <laughs> um, the, the the FBI is using in their defense. So basically, I can get into the backstory, but a bunch of people realized that this informant was spying on them, and they are trying to sue the FBI. <laughs> Stop laughing at me. <laughs> He's okay, trying to <laughs> sue the FBI for their illegal surveillance in violation of their constitutional rights, and. What they're pulling is they're saying, oh, you can't go through with this lawsuit because it will violate, like, you know, it, it will have to release information that's too, you know, classified. This could threaten security. So we're, we're pulling state secrets and saying, just trust us. This was legitimate, you know. So they're they're blocking any sort of accountability for what they did with these informants, which was crazy, by the way. Like, we need to play the video that I added that I sent you because okay, but it gets, even yeah. even if you're against this, it's important to know that you, the Supreme Court, you know, actually, by the way, which I am, I'm against as well, depending on whether the details are correct or not. But the the Supreme Court is not setting a precedent where where this is okay to just spy on Muslims. Okay, so this is like tech. They take like it's important to realize that technically they're okaying so they're okaying not releasing the secret. Because if they were like, oh, yeah, the Supreme Court, like, oh, yeah, we approve on you being able to spy on people based on their religion, that would be a lot like a bigger news than like that would be setting a precedent that makes this like, OK, which th technically that's not the route that they're going. So that's, that's I just wanted to point that out. Yes, but like, I don't know, I think you're downplaying the fact that they're allowing for there to be zero government accountability. Like they're allowing the cover up to continue. Well, I'm, okay, that's important. Okay, but I think it would be just a much of a big, much bigger deal if the Supreme Court just a okayed targeting people based on their religion. That would be even a bigger deal. <laughs> okay, okay, I see what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So I'm not saying I'm okay. I'm, I'm. Uh, yeah, I am in favor of government accountability. I don't know, like I don't. I don't. Maybe our opinions would change if we know exactly what's happening in the background, right? Like maybe you know, maybe if we knew exactly what secrets would be released because of this, we would be like, holy crap! Like that would like devastate a whole bunch of stuff. That we don't know. Like there's a whole bunch of things that we don't know. Based on the limited information that we have, 
I'm against this and I'm in favor of government accountability, right? So, but again, our opinions are not 100% here. Um, I know that there might be things that I don't know that if I knew my opinions would change on this, okay? Also, I wanna, uh, uh, the cover is, I it's really good. <laughs> it's, um, we have to give a raise, a bonus, not a raise, a bonus to whoever came up with this cover. It's pretty cool. Even, even though, this is not what most American Muslims look like. Okay, um, this is you know I'm I you know I'm Muslims in America don't go around looking like this. Most of it's them. hard to find you know diverse and accurate copyright free images. I know, Muslims. I know, <laughs> I know, I know that even though that is the case, this image captures most of what this headline is like. This is pretty good. Like, <laughs> you know, the yeah, guy the, in the America, background. Like, I got the, the guy I got, I got him. I got it. He's reading the Quran. He's reading the Quran. <laughs> I got him. It really is like that, though. Like, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> wait. So, this news researching for this caused me to go down a wormhole today researching these programs and these incidents of the government entrapping like Muslims with terrorism charges through these um, in, in, um, informant programs. It's so crazy. Like it's one of those things where as an American, you kind of like have this vague knowledge that that's probably going on or like you heard that it did happen maybe once before, but then I actually went in, I had the time to go look into the whole situation in general or in more depth. And I was shocked. I was shocked. The way that the FBI conducts a lot of these, th this whole case in particular with these people, like I wanna dig into it because everything about it, I feel like it is best described by the old World War II acronym FUBAR, which means effed up beyond all recognition. Like it's such a, shit show from top to bottom this particular case um can we play that video that i i showed or yes. i gave you this one yes okay so this is a video i found today from 2009 because this this whole issue has been going on for like a long time this is just the most recent aspect of this case so this is um more information from back in 2009 okay Every this man went to mosques States. claiming to be a convert to Islam. And my cover was that I'm a French and Syrian uh, individual who is seeking to embrace my Islamic roots. But in truth, Craig Monte says he was working as an undercover spy for the FBI. So what they to. told me was that I would be trained as a Muslim to... I want this job. No, you don't. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Infiltrate mosques. He's an ex-convict who claims over the course of many months, he secretly recorded conversations with hundreds of Muslims, including in more than 10 different mosques in the Los Angeles area. And then he all of a sudden jumped into like, I can get us weapons to go do something in, in some building in LA or something like that. Curdy and others worked out at this Irvine, California gym where Monte admitted recording conversations with Muslims as they exercised. These Arab Americans say his actions while working for the FBI amounted to entrapment and violated their constitutional rights. He was telling people, was like, I have a sheikh in Afghanistan that I know. I was hearing that and I was hearing him saying stuff like, you know, I, I have access to different things that, you know, I can help you all plan something if you need to plan something. Those were the types of things that I was hearing. Troubled by Monte's words, this man, Ahmadullah Niazi, reported him to the FBI. Soon after that, the FBI arrested Niazi for a charge that boiled down to lying on his U.S. passport application. What? During Monte's role as an... How? Wait, what? Explain. Go back and play that again. So this, let me break it down for you guys. This guy, the informant who was trying to, you know, bring up little hints so that people would start talking about jihad and wanting to wage jihad on infidels with him. So he like drops little hints, right? He gets so bad and starts freaking out congregants so much 
that they try to put restraining orders against him and they go to the FBI to report on him. The, these Muslims go to the FBI because they're like, there's this guy that's freaking us out in our community with the violent way that he's talking. I think he might hurt someone. That person is the FBI informant. When this guy went to the FBI to report this guy because of his his terroristic talking points and they're like we, some of the authorities need to be know about this guy this is dangerous they go and start investigating this guy's history and they start bringing up they start bringing up things against him about his immigration history but he's a good guy For, he's like reporting yes. jihadis so they're going after the person who's doing the good thing and reporting like shouldn't you hire him like hey <laughs> You, you seem to be a Muslim in so, you you don't need to need you don't even need to hire like a fake Muslim this guy is a re real Muslim <laughs> who's anti-jihadi inside the God inside the same mosque that you're <laughs> so you should instead of fighting him you should be sending him a job application <laughs> I don't know I mean you shouldn't be because you have no business spying on people like that but even in your own evil twisted ways he's on your side like wouldn't you want to encourage his behavior? But anyways, no, they're just all they care about is protecting their informant and their asset. And this guy who's the informant is a piece of work. He was previously convicted and served in time in prison for fraud. And like, Wait, this is what? the guy the FBI approaches to become an informant. And his whole yeah, cover the person, was that the, the he was person a you're against filmer. is better than your informant. Wait, what? Go ahead. One of the people that he was sent to profile was an imam in the Southern California Muslim community, which is apparently one of the largest in the United States. Um, this this imam was like encouraged his community to go talk to the FBI, like to trust the authorities, to really rely on them to protect our communities. Like he promoted that and he wanted to build that trust so people could have somewhere to go if they were had worries, right? And then there was a piece that came out there was started to be reporting on these surveillance programs and in a conversation that an fbi some someone associated with the fbi came to give to this um, meeting of islamic community members um this imam gets up and just like asks him a question and is like you're saying that we should just be friends that there's nothing to worry about nothing of this had ever happened blah 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 but there's this reporting that this other person was saying this and i can't get over this contention and blah 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 and you're like because and then and then the fbi goes he, he goes are you calling me a liar He's like, I'm not calling oh, you a liar. I just don't know what to make of these different things I'm hearing. And I'm hearing something totally different from you. And then mm -hmm. that guy became one of the people who was targeted by this informant. And now he's one of the just plaintiffs because, in this case. Oh, my God. Just because he was, like, questioning the FBI agent? The informant, that's what he says. Although, oh. I don't know how much to trust this guy. Yeah, okay, okay. But yeah, but this is footage this make, of that whole interaction is, with the imam. And the this other backfires FBI. because this makes the community that you want you want the, you want the Muslim Americans to think like the authorities are there to protect them, and you want to create a bond between all sorts of American communities and the agents, so that they come and they they feel like they can trust you and come to you. By, by creating this atmosphere that is you, you the, the agents, you know, against the community, then they, you're going to isolate them. They're going to feel like, why would we come to you? You're against all of us. You're not just against the jihadis. You're against us as a whole. So you're just decreasing the number of self-reports that you would be getting because they feel like you're not, you're not an agency there to protect them. It's obviously like not in... Yeah. But again, I think like a lot of the whole point is a lot of these agencies, they're mostly focused on making themselves relevant, you know, and justifying higher budgets. Yes, that's where I was going. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if there's no problem, if there's less of a problem, then you're less needed, you're less relevant, right? And if you rely on the community, if the community is not threatened by you, and comes to you 
then your agents are also less needed because the community is just self-reporting. <laughs> so maybe mm -hmm. like it's it would be within it would be within the best interest of your department to create some form of hostility to make yourself more relevant. You know, it's so wild. So I watched a documentary today by Al Jazeera about these informant programs. And granted, you know, this is Al Jazeera and they have their own agenda and bias. Um, so there might be other sides to this, these stories that they were presenting than, you know, um, what I saw. But I was, so it covers a lot of these, these incidents in different communities. And in one of them, there were guys who were prosecuted and spent time in prison for, you know, connections to quote unquote Al Qaeda. Their only connection to Al Qaeda was the contact that they had with the FBI informant who claimed to be Al Qaeda. There was no real connection with them at all. It's your own informant who claims to be the one with the connection and they have a connection to this informant. They, um, there, there were so many aspects to it. It was so crazy. And they, in the documentary covers a lot of this case as well, where the guy who was this informant was such a piece of work. He was like, the FBI claims that I was the best informant alive. And then shows him putting on a skull cap and a red and white kefia and like these wraparound black shades. And I was like, who, what am I watching? Like, you look <laughs> so out of place. The way, like, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Like, it was like, like how a kid would dress up as a Muslim. Like, it didn't make any sense. It's like you look <laughs> bizarre. <laughs> okay, should we watch the rest of the clip? Um, yeah, there was some other stuff in this clip that I was going to Monte's words, this man, Ahmadullah Niazi, reported him to the FBI. Soon after that, the FBI arrested Niazi for a charge that boiled down to lying on his U.S. passport application. At Niazi's bail hearing, Monte's role as an FBI confidential informant was revealed. Monte claims he no longer works for them. The FBI keeps claiming that they treat American Muslims as partners. We cannot be partners and suspects at the same time. You cannot call us partners. Is that an atheist republic logo on his shirt? Okay, I that. didn't notice that, but it does look exactly, it does look exactly <laughs> like it. <laughs> Guys, this is an inf this is our <laughs> informant. <laughs> in a, in the, <laughs> maybe hide your pin. Like, look at this. This is a guys. This is so much like an Atheist Republic logo. It does. <laughs> Holy crap! How could it be anything else? Look, you see the circle and the two, <laughs> the lion and the horse, and the text right under it. <laughs> I swear, this cannot be anything other than the Atheist Republic logo. Am I seeing things? Tell me I'm wrong. Well, you're not wrong, but also this was 2009, so it's impossible. <laughs> Why is that impossible? We were around in 2009. Did you have the logo in 2009? The logo wasn't yes. Yes, trademarked yes, that early. Well, it wasn't trademarked, but we had the logo. We trademarked okay. it later. Guys, this guy, like, okay, he's an ex secret ex-Muslim. <laughs> guys, like, you guys are not seeing this? Like, okay, so let me see the live chat. Yeah, secular race, like holy, yeah, holy shit, it's totally lost. Guys, it can't be anything else. I'm swearing, like this is like our logo. God damn. <laughs> so this was <laughs> and send informants or provocateurs into the mosque on a fishing expedition trying to entrap people. We made several Yeah, people are saying if you uh, were you guys had an original logo. Yeah, this is our logo. Yeah. Request for an interview with the FBI field office here in Los Angeles wanting to give them an opportunity to respond to these allegations. But they said they do not do interviews related to current investigations, and they don't comment about confidential informants. So they declined our request for an interview. As far as inter um, interrogation, as citizens... Groups like the American Civil Liberties Union, or ACLU, are taking matters into their own hands, holding workshops inside L.A. area mosques to teach Americans... This is a Shia mom here. Yeah. It's their constitutional rights. And he's a scion. Um, well, well, oh, because yes. some are concerned based on... Wait, this is entirely a Shia place. You know how I know? This is... All right. Okay, I thought this is like a, like a Islamic area where they accept everybody, even Shias. 
But then I realized, no, this is like entirely a Shia place because of look at the background decoration. Allah, Muhammad, Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein. So this is a Shia gathering. What, what was the purpose of your because uh, some are concerned. So maybe the reason why they're infiltrating in this is because they they're expecting some Iran like Iranian gov, you know, the Islamic Republic of Iran influence because a lot of these Shia yeah, because a lot of these Shia places are actually um ways for Ir the Iranian government to use them as a way to get into the American community, right? So maybe that's why they're investigating this. So I don't know. Based on the FBI's silence to Monte's claims, they are being monitored in their places of worship. I mean, what? I mean, just to be a little bit more charitable to the FBI, what are they supposed what? to do? Like, if we want to be somewhat charitable, okay, like, let's just steal them, okay? If the Iranian government is using these Shia, like Shia centers, for example, as a way to infiltrate within the American community, okay? What is the, if, what would you do if you were the FBI? Like, how would you, if you want to okay, figure this here's out? here's the thing. I am not against surveillance if there is like probable cause yeah. or proof or probable like reasons or to suspect someone is conducting or planning to conduct a crime. Like a lot of these surveillance programs, they would go target specific Muslim student groups who like and literally follow them on their way to go like whitewater rafting. Like right. also just talk about the waste of government government resources. It's crazy. Like so, in a lot of these cases, I because I, I was also looking into how this goes down on the East Coast, and there's this huge issues in New York City and New Jersey, and um and the surveillance or profiling just seems so blatant because everyone affected by these things are saying, "What is the reason? What is the probable cause that would make you surveil me?" and the government instead says state secrets we can't talk about that but trust us there is reasons there are reasons but and you know that we should or are legally allowed to you know surveil people in this way but we just can't tell you what those reasons are so we're just so, going to like violate your constitutional need, rights in the meanwhile this is why it, we wish like if there was a way that somebody they could be held accountable because technically the surveillance i think the surveillance should be allowed okay because these places are used by even if most of the people there are good they are at, used as a way for you know go by governments that have ill intentions right the problem that we have is like the framing of the of the good people, <laughs> like like this the, the ta like certain tactics that they're using. I think it's bad. Like I don't know, like going after that one guy that was like seemed to be like a good guy just because like finding a technical, you know, just or like harassing the people who are questioning you, right? Or entrapment is that's a, that's a. a is that that's what it's called right entrapment when you're like hey do, do you guys want to do jihad how about some how about we do some jihad right like is that and they like you're an fbi agent and you're just ad, you know you're advertising you know you're 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 promoting crimes and then if they say yes to you well technically you were the person who was promoting it right isn't that called what is, is that i don't know how the laws yeah uh, it's entrapment uh, entrapment yeah so that's called entrapment actually there's a i think we should have a meme for that right we should have like this meme right <laughs> and we should we that should really just put like, offense. i yeah, too that's... want to wage jihad <laughs> <Not the infidels. laughs> yeah, like, no it should be like anyone do Hello, some jihad. Mujahideen. Like, just... <laughs> yeah like that okay so that's the meme for it but yeah, that those practices should entrapment should be you know should be fought against. These retaliatory um, techniques should be um, fought against. But I don't know if we want to completely go out and dismiss the surveillance as a whole. Like I think maybe they're using some question you know some bad tactics, but that doesn't mean that they shouldn't have surveillance at all. 
Well, no, um, I don't think that mosques should be surveilled unless they have probable reason to suspect that there is some serious activity going on. So I'm not dismissing anything. Yeah, yeah, but maybe they do have, and they don't know which mosques. Maybe they don't. They know that the Islamic Republic of Iran is using Shia centers for their own agenda, and now they're in the process of figuring out which ones. So what do they do? For they example, look for better evidence before bugging people to send them in. That violates they, well, people's they, rights of privacy. That's, like that's, private citizens. That's crazy. You, that's how. That's how they. Okay, so you're saying they look, they look for better evidence, but that's the point. They're trying to find the evidence. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, FBI, when they find evidence, they have to surveil people. They have to do some surveillance on people to find that evidence. Where else, like, do you think, like, how could they ignore people without looking, when they're looking for evidence? They, the trust evidence, me, the FBI can do a lot of steps before they physically send someone into a all, building. Okay, but all of that involve, like, information is held by people. So if they want to get the evidence, which includes that information, they would have to do surveillance on some people. I mean, that's the entire point of the FBI. So I'm just trying to think about I don't it. Really, I don't people. really understand what you're advocating for. Like, I'm just saying that just maybe like, we should be... every mosque until we find something. Well, I mean, if the we're just looking for is, the evidence, I mean, if you have reasonable, if you have some, if you have reason to believe that certain mosques are being used by other governments to do some shady stuff, then what would you suggest? How would they go about finding where this is happening? I just think like their tactics was wrong, but I don't want to look like this look, look at the trail of money first. Okay, but how did they like? So, like the the tactics that they use is if you look at the trail of money, these are individuals privately using their money for like at first. But the way it works is that you're spending your money on things that are completely legitimate, right? Things that are just expression of religious values right you do fundraising for your ashura for your prayers and then you just build up the organizations and you know tracing the, actually tracing the money would also be surveillance on individual private individuals because you know it, that would be wait you that would be surveillance of individuals private money because if you do surveillance of that you're advocating for exactly what you're you seem to be against because if you do trace the money you see that okay this is just individual people's liberty to do express this religious freedom that's how it starts right you build the base by spending all this money on things that are nothing other than religious practices so if you want to trace that you're basically surveilling on people's private individual expression of their you know transactions and stuff like that Trans yeah, so transactions I mean, I also think that transactions like are an expression yeah, transactions are an expression of, you know, your sure. free your free expression. Yeah, go on. I mean, I I all I understand that's a form of surveillance. Obviously, I just feel like that's a lot different than physically sending someone in to just listen to the conversations of random individuals and then just like entrap them because you won't shut the fuck up about jihad. <laughs> like it's so, and the whole case of this guy in particular is such a mess. I'm like. He, everyone found him out. His cover got blown. Um, he, he, not a single case that he was involved in resulted in a conviction. In fact, the FBI like kicked him out, basically turned on him. Then he turned on the FBI. He's trying to sue the FBI. And then he joined the defense of the one guy who's his inform, his surveillance was the one guy that they were trying to prosecute. And then he jumped on that guy's defense. And so this didn't result in a single conviction. Like nothing about this is worth taxpayer money. Yeah. So, but that's what I'm agreeing with. I'm saying these specific instances we can condemn and be like, this is wrong. But I just think we shouldn't throw out the baby out with the bathwater and just be like, we're completely against surveillance. I mean, at the end of the day, that's how so a lot of these attacks. I mean, if you look at every single terrorist attack that was stopped, 
before it happened, it was because of surveillance like this. Yes. Right. So we get, you don't want to throw out the entire sur like surveillance. Like, please keep surveilling. Is that the verb for it? And keeping us in keep in like I think we need that to keep us safe. No, but the, with these informant, I can't remember the numbers, but th with these informant programs, the number of people that it actually catches in the results and convictions is a st like a small minority. Yeah, but it's Most worth it, it because those small instances where they stop it, it was like it was going to be an attack. You I don't know. know. I mean? I, I'm, I'm really downplaying the fact of like how overarch overreaching these programs are yeah so we could like again we want to specifically like if we want to condemn each one of them i think we ha we should condemn them on an individual basis and be like this was the wrong practice In you know like i don't want to cut like sorry i just well, bless you i don't want to cut thank you i don't want to condemn the entire thing i know like i am for some surveillance you know anyways I think we agree. Um, yeah, so Rudrish is saying surveillance is fine, but it has to be constitutional. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. Okay, so I mean, if the surveillance is like, you're like, we're just surveilling these people just because they're Muslim, like just because we're, if it's just because they're Muslim and nothing else, then that would be unconstitutional. But if it like, we that's have- like, That's basically we, what happened here. Okay, but in many other we, don't, cases. we don't know. We don't know what the, because the, the data didn't come out. So we don't know. But if the reason is like we have reason to believe that in certain the, the mosques that have this faith, um, we have this information to believe that somebody is trying to do something and okay, and that's why we have to do surveillance on these these mosques, then that you're not targeting them specifically because of the of them being muslim you're targeting them because of the information you have and uh, you know if that is the reason that would not be unconstitutional in my opinion i could be wrong because i'm not a constitutional lawyer anyways can we <laughs> susanna but i like how aggressive you are when um, when wanting to limit the government's reach, okay, so like I can see like the fire in your eyes right now. I'm like, so pissed like, at you. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you being such a simp for the feds? Like, ew. <laughs> like, oh. Well, because because they 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 keep us alive sometimes, okay. So that's why I simp for the feds because they do I, sometimes we... keep us alive. But god damn. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.